Okay, welcome back. Come on, let's play a Final Fantasy XIV on the PC. We are in Il Meg, the Fairy Kingdom, which is a pretty crazy looking place. And uh, we're sort of on the run from the Yulmoran army a little bit, but that'll probably be fine. As it stands, we cannot hope to find the way to Orange. For that, we must convince the Pixies to lift the spell. From what I can make of the voices, the creatures want to play with us. If that is the case, they should permit us to find their village, Lidra Land. Come, I have a sneaking suspicion this path will lead us directly into their midst. Oh, and I should mention that Minfilia has been informed of our situation, of the different worlds in our mission. You may consider her an ally. Um, <clears throat> so if you recall the, uh, the trust system, where you can play, you can do dungeons... From 70 to 80 with NPC allies. I looked into the what people have to say about it. And it seems most people don't like it. And it's because they specifically... They purposefully restrict the amount of damage that the NPCs do. So that it's always going to be slower than doing it with like an actual group of people. They do this on purpose. So it's really just for people that have problems. For whatever reason, playing with other people. But what some people do, I guess, if you really want to do some other activity on your computer, <laughs> you don't have, you don't want to play Final Fantasy XIV for a little while, but you still want to get some benefit. Um, what you can do is just go in there as like a DPS class, and then just AFK. For the most part, you still have to move things along a little bit so that they'll keep fighting. But it takes them a long time to actually kill shit. And you do have to participate in boss battles. Otherwise, you'll die. Um, but it's a mostly AFK activity. If you're just like, if I was doing work, or if I was playing like, I don't know, something on an emulator, you know, something lightweight, I could just alt tab back in or whatever. You could do that. <laughs> and the XP is not atrocious it's not great though i think when i ran it with right red mage i got like 2 million or 2.5 million xp it's not great but it is mostly afk well here we are yet the pixies are nowhere to be seen knowing them their games have already begun in which case man there's a variety of plant native to these parts with a distinctive furl tip looking grass is its name so-called because it can be used to spy pixies, believe it or not. I'll explain how I know all of this later, but first I need you to help me find some. Oh, if a voice calls to you under no circumstances should you respond. You only subject, subject yourself to further mischief. Alright, I quickly restarted my game because there's a, there's a technical problem. <clears throat> with Final Fantasy XIV that I really wish they would fix, but I doubt they ever will. Basically, it has to do with um, changing audio outputs. Suddenly a voice rings out. What is that you seek, child? Perhaps I can help you find it. Searching for looking grass. Ah, yes, I know the plant. And being the kindly pixie that I am, I shall take you to it. Just close your eyes and focus on my voice. Set your mind adrift, and together we shall go to the ends of the realm. Body begins to feel heavy. Great. Um. So basically, if I load the game with my headphones active, as my active audio output on Windows, everything's fine. It all is fine. But 
if I load it with like my speakers, stereo. What is that? Where's that? When is that? In your dreams, perhaps? Forget all about that place. Real Meg is your home now. Today and tomorrow and forevermore. Great. If I load it with my speakers active, or I... And then I try and switch to my headphones, or if I load with the headphones and then switch to speakers at some point and switch back the headphones, the headphones work. It's just the audio level is way lower for some reason. And if I crank the headphones all the way to the max, it's like audible for me. It's fine for me, but the recording, it's a little quiet. It's just too quiet, especially with this ducking thing. And now you would you wouldn't be able to hear anything when I'm speaking other than my voice, which is not great. So in order to get proper volume through the headphones in this game, I have to load the game with headphones active. And it's really obnoxious because I only like to wear headphones when I'm recording. Normally, I just like have speakers, but uh, yeah, it just basically means I have to perpetually have headphones. I take it you met with some trouble. Apologies for subjecting you to that. Can I assume from your presence that you managed to find us some looking grass? Yes, this is the stuff. Thus armed, we should be able to see through the pixie's veil of invisibility, and seeing them is the first step to dealing with them. Come, let's gather everyone and put Arrange's little trick to good use. Rasitha, Krakleth. No, we are found. How did this mortal know our trick? Wait, I recognize their souls. These two have been here before. Adorable. Oh, play with us. We have neither the time nor inclination to play. We have come to see Uriange. Oh yes, Uriange, the peculiar one. In return for a place in El Meg, he agreed to a riddle contest with us for seven days and seven nights without any sleep. <laughs> oh, that was so much fun. We must do it again. I'm sure he'd be delighted. Now, if you'd be so kind as to lift your spell. Should we? Would we? What now? I don't know, but this is their home, so we must indulge them. Right, we've made up our minds. We will lift our spell on one condition that you first lend us a helping hand, or two, or three. Once you've helped solve all of our troubles, we'll let you see Urian J. Pixie's honor. Well, there you have it. Pixie chores. I suggest we split up. Yeah, this is uh, not what this game needed. Oh, gosh. 
Got a bunch of bullshit. East Lala's errand. Uh, I'm so hungry I may faint. Fruit. A little fruit will set me right. Will you go and fetch some for me? Just outside the village, you'll find a hillock. Two great bell trees grow there. If you give them a shake, they should render up their sweet succulent burdens. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing fairy voices, <laughs> let alone fucking Scottish fairy voices. I'm sorry. I can't handle it. Suins. Ooh, ooh, look at me. Look at me. I have a task for you. Lidra Lan Loran is our beloved village, and we want it to always look lovely. And it can't look lovely without flowers blooming. And no flowers bloom lovelier than Everblooms. So here are some Everbloom seeds. Take them and sow them here, there, and everywhere around the village. Simple as a dimple, yes? Oh, we've got some bullshit to do, don't we? Mortal, mortal, hear my plea. Our precious children are thirsty, and I need you to bring them water. Who are our children, you ask? Why, they're the leaf men you see standing about our village. Adorable, aren't they? Now you need to go to Longmere Lake to draw the water. Once you have it, see that our children have a good drenching. Oh, but be warned, the Fuath make their home in the lake. They tend to play rough, so have care. <clears throat> I mean, at least we get... A million XP per quest. So this is this is gonna be some good XP. Uh-huh. Okay. I mean this is basically like daily quests. If you do any of the beast tribe dailies, it's it's sh shit like this. And I'm sure the fairies are gonna be like a beast tribe or something. I'll be doing this shit every day of my life. Look at the health. My God. This is like a raid boss. Not very interesting to watch. I mean, like I said, they're basically daily quests. All right, that's one done. pretty. It's a pretty place. These guys aren't tough. Eat shit. Oh, the leaf men. Oh, the leaf men. Of this place, though, in Wonderland, that is uh, a redeeming factor. But I mean, just compare this place to any location in Stormblood. I mean, it's just—it's night and day. 
I mean, maybe people don't like this and they prefer Stormblood, but I am not one of those people. Giving water to our children. Thank you ever so much. They all they are all very dear to us. They wandered into Ilmega, stray mortals, but we grew attached to them and decided to take them in. You and yours would have been our children too, but the enchantment didn't catch as well as we'd hoped. It's never too late, of course. That's pretty fucking horrific. So if you came in here without the best raid gear in the game, if they just give you a full set of 395 for these basic quests, so pretty good. There's all these people here. There must be something that pops up in this little cove. Probably has something to do with the fairy beast quest. I do believe we'll get uh, level 73 off of this. Oh, uh, so hungry. Did you get the fruit? Here's your fucking fruit. Oh, thank you ever so much. You've saved me. Hee <laughs> hee. Yes, saved me from my boredom. You should have seen the look on your face when the bugs came down. Hee <laughs> hee. Ah, you've done me a great service, mortal. If there's one thing we pixies are serious about, it's having fun. Dull and painful things? Hate, hate, hate them. Sin eaters are dull and painful both, so we hate them especially. You mortals try to fight those monstrosities, but there's no fun in that. Best to avoid them altogether, we say. Okay, why is me fighting a bug fun, but a Sin Eater fighting, like, a human not fun? You, you're done sowing the seeds. Thank you. This shall help Lidra Laran live up to its name, which means Flower House, in case you weren't aware. We weren't always here, you know. We used to live deep in a lush forest. It was beautiful beyond compare, but almost all of it was swallowed up by the light. For a while we roamed, but eventually we found a place that men had abandoned. Together with our fellow fey folk, we decided to make it our new home. Land of everlasting spring. This is our home and it could be yours too, forever and ever and ever. Great. Seventy-three. Very nice, very nice. Unto the truth. How goes it, man? So a mix of menial tasks and pranks. Yep. That pretty much sums up my own experience. They have no troubles worthy of the name. How long are we supposed to keep at this? They're clearly playing with us. Indeed. Whenever I inquire how much more there is to be done, the answer is ever the same. A little. I doubt they have any intention of releasing us in the near future. Uriage once told me a story about the Pixies. They're born from the souls of those who died as children, or so it's believed. Though they don't have memories of their previous lives, the desire to have fun remains imprinted on their souls. So they live only to play, keeping hapless mortals for their pleasure for years on end, sometimes even unto death. In the past, when I sought to identify the true nature of ghosts, I came upon literature examining a similar subject. The soul was likened to a core that resides in the ether, and its presence is what differentiates us from such beings as sprites and arcane entities. Upon death, said core ordinarily dissipates alongside the ether that composed the flesh. However, it may be held together and bound to the corporeal realm, 
either by the will of its owner or by means of certain arts. In time, the soul may regather ether unto itself to assume another form, or find newly emerged life in which to abide. The pixies may be one such instance of this. If ghosts are merely souls without bodies, what does that make us? I think you've become that which you fear most, brother dearest. However the pixies may have come into being, if we leave them to judge when they are satisfied, they will never be satisfied. Nay, we must negotiate new terms with the creatures. Or where to begin? It seems to me we would need at least one among them to sympathize with us. In the course of your chores, did any of you encounter a pixie who seemed even faintly amenable to reason? Beo Ol. What? You knew a pixie from before? Not only are you acquainted, but you've entered into a pact. You might have mentioned this sooner. At any rate, I dare to hope this will offer us a way out. Without further delay, then, summon this Feo Ol, if you please. Okay. Feo Ol. I mean, are we sort of trying to explain what the fuck's going on with Minfilia? Like, her soul is just bound here or something? A voice rings out in your mind. So, my sapling has finally remembered about his lovely branch. But with such a half-hearted call, he may as well lop me off and cast me aside. <laughs> I have no sapling. Okay. Oh my god. I have to say this whole shit? Okay, please fail all I need you. <laughs> Is that your idea of a fervent call? A sodden log could do it with more fire. Holy shit. Oh, loveliest of branches, please grant me your succor. How did I fuck up? Oh, I didn't add an exclamation point. God damn it. summon me ever since you came here. Waiting and waiting and waiting. But my sapling didn't so much as utter my name. Such a heartless thing he is. Cold and cruel and heartless! Another self-important little brat. Just what we need. Reminds me of my childhood. All right, I'm sorry. It was a joke. Honestly, just a joke. But just now you called for me so earnestly, so fervently. I couldn't possibly stay angry at you. Very well. As your lovely branch, I will lend you my strength. for you to think of any new games, though, apparently. If I were you, I'd be bored of myself. Now let me make something clear. That mortal is mine. No matter what you do, he will never be yours. Never, never, ever! Oh, not even a bit. But what about the others? Surely we can keep them. No, no, no! You can't keep them either! They're for my amusement and mine alone! And if you lay so much as a finger on my sapling, I'll scatter the contents of his bag all over your precious village! 
There'll be cold, hard metal, furry, festering food, stinky, sweaty small clothes, and... and all manner of other terrible, unmentionable things. How would you like that, hmm? All right, all right. But will you not at least let us play with the twins? Just while the others go and see Urianje? Aye, aye, that's all we ask. And we promise we'll play nicely. <sighs> it seems we won't be joining you. Aye! <laughs> we'll reveal the hidden Fernick to you at once. So this is the true Ilmeg. How are you feeling? Better. I think I remember the way now. Apologies for the delay. Shall we go and see Uriange? Your lovely branch is useful, yes? So whenever you're in trouble, you must remember to make use of me! Alright, it's actually slightly less cool now. I mean, it, it's different. It's different. I mean, it's still pretty vibrant and colorful, and it's pretty good. I mean, it's very good. But I kind of like that fogginess. That was very mysterious and unique. For Alpha Noah and Eleanor, Elizay's sake, let us be quick. It would be a shame to return only to find that they had been made to play one game too many. Now, the place we seek is the abandoned manor of a nobleman and scholar. The Bookman's Shelves, it's called, after the fellow's vast collection of tomes. An agreeable habitat for our friend, I'm sure you'll agree. If we follow the path north, we should fi soon find the place. Come along. <clears throat> I mean, what's that place? That place looks pretty cool. I almost wonder, like, I, I again, I was not following the game at the time. Um, but I wonder if there was, like, I was not the only one. That was upset by the overall lack of uh, variety and originality in Stormblood locations. And this expansion was like, oh, oh okay. We hear you. How about this shit? Because, like, each location has really been interesting so far in different ways. And just a lot of color. A lot of color. I don't know how they're going to top this one with the next expansion, but I'm sure they'll come up with something cool. The Bookman's Shell. Here we are at long last. I give you Orange's humble abode. Come, let's see if he's home. Orange. Are you in? Unto a world weary of heroes, a hero wends his way. 
The Exarch did send word that thou would seek me out, but ne'er did I imagine thou wouldst arrive so soon. Full glad am I to see thee once more, my friend, and none the worse for thy travails. Run along, Minfilia. We will meet you outside. But... Another one for you to imbue, if you'd be so kind. I take it thou hast met with our other comrades already? Hmm. That Master Alfino and Mistress Alize now travel in thy company is of great comfort to me. As for the rest, it beginneth in earnest. The hunting of the Light Wardens, and perforce the war with Yulmor. Hark thee then to my words, and through them behold the vision that I did glimpse, that of the Eighth Umbral Calamity. As I drifted hither to the first, traversing the boundary twixt reality and potentiality, I did bear witness to events yet to come. There I saw the combined forces of Eorzea and the Far East offering fierce resistance to the legions of Garlemald. So fierce, in fact, that they did begin to push the enemy back, ilm by painful ilm at first, then yalm by yalm, and malm by malm in time. Yet the joy they felt was short-lived. For in so doing, they did force the Empire's hand. Faced with defeat, the Garleans turned to a weapon most vile. Black Rose. Its potency defied all reckoning. Once released, the gas took on a life of its own, wreaking untold carnage not only in Eorzea, but in the provinces of the Empire besides. From fighters upon the front lines to babes in their beds, none were spared. And as the casualties became too numerous to count, so did the fabric of civilization begin to unravel. Nor did the land itself escape unscathed, for spreading from the site of its release, Black Rose brought death to the very soil. To survive amidst the chaos and upheaval, men came to live by the sword, the rule of law giving way, inevitably, to the rule of might. Thus was the spark struck and the fire kindled, and swiftly did it spread as a blaze in a field of straw to engulf every corner of the world. Nations worthy of the name did then cease to exist and those souls brave and true who might have risen to restore order.
were no more. For the weapon spared not one, not even thee. An endless age of war, begotten by the blight of Black Rose. Such is the legacy of the eighth umbral calamity which I did behold. No matter the cost, we must forestall this tragedy. To that end, I have labored during my sojourn in this world, discovering in so doing the answer to a pressing mystery. That of Black Rose's inexplicable potency. Come. Dost thou recognize yonder chart? Chart of the Elements. Indeed. Tis a rendering of the elemental wheel, such as one might find in classrooms across the source. As the chart maketh plain, our world is composed of six elements, in addition to which there exist two poles in fundamental opposition. Astral, the active, Umbral, the passive. As a reflection of the source, the first naturally comprises the self-same forces. Yet, curiously, there is a notable divergence in their nomenclature. To be specific, the denizens of this world employ not the terms astral and umbral. Did he just say nomenclature? Thus was I moved to inquire what name said forces had been assigned. A simple question which yielded a most unexpected answer. Upon demanding the name of the pole aligned with activity and growth, I was told that as life's myriad colors combined to produce black, the people of the first had called it darkness. At this did my mind begin to race. Yet was only when I asked what name had been given to the pole aligned with passivity that mine eyes were opened to the truth. Peace and tranquility being as purest white unmarred by color, I was told it had been given the name of light. That's umbral light and astral darkness, yes? I'm no etherologist. But it strikes me that the nomenclature of the first is rooted in the generation of the two forces, while our own appears to focus on their effects. Which makes one wonder, have we had it backwards all this time? Tis indeed a compelling question, and one which beareth closer examination. Yet what knowledge we already possess sufficeth to explain the chain of events. The phenomenon of etheric thinning observed in the source is the consequence of light, the power of stasis, flowing in from the first to stifle the movement of ether within the land. And according to Master Alfino, Black Rose slayeth by halting the circulation of ether within living beings. Should such a weapon be unleashed even as the first were rejoined, replete as it is with light. We would have a disaster of untold proportions on our hands. A calamity. Well, at least we have a better grasp of what we're facing. Our objective, however, remains unchanged. We are to eliminate the Light Warden of Ilneg. Speaking of which, were you able to ascertain its whereabouts? Aye. 
is all but certainly ensconced within Leergir, the castle which standeth in the midst of the lake. To enter said stronghold, we must needs turn to the Pixies for aid. Fortunately, I have become quite adept at courting their cooperation. Henceforth shall I accompany you, and do all in my power to ensure that my vision doth not come to pass. Alright, uh, sort of went over my head, but Uriage is uh, an astrologian now. Tancred's a gunbreaker. Interesting. I wonder what Yashtola is. Probably still a white mage, but you never know. Supporting cooperation. My friend, ere I speak of the task at hand, there is a question I would pose to thee. What thinkest thou of mine appearance? Take up astrology? Indeed. Though the night be lost, behind the shroud of blinding light, doubt not but that the star shines still. I have chosen to avail myself of their guidance, that I might navigate the sea of uncertainty that stretcheth before us. For a blessing, my prior studies of astrology did provide me with adequate grounding in the art. But enough of myself, let us now speak of our task. As I did mention, if we are to enter Li Gia, we must needs gain the Pixies' cooperation. This is a simple matter of presenting unto them a suitable gift. I shall procure a selection of viands that shall please their palates. Thancred, pray assist me in this endeavor. Beats? Meanwhile, Mang, I bid thee obtain that which will please their eyes. In these parts there abideth a vilekin known for its beauteous wings, the hawker. I shall lend thee a receptacle within which thou mayest capture a weakened specimen. Okay. And it's right outside your door. Very convenient. Look at that, just all my big cooldown abilities. Oh, okay. okay, maybe we can capture it. Got him. Simple as that. Thou art returned. Wert thou able to capture a hawker? Ah, a truly magnificent set of wings. I shall treat them at once to make fast their vibrant colors. Thank her too should return anon, upon which I shall ready all the items for its presentation. Pray take thine ease meanwhile. Is done. The Pixies shall be well pleased with these gifts. Ah, lest I forget. White Aurasite, newly forged for thy use. Our mission being to thwart a rejoining, we will most assuredly cross paths with those who crave the contrary, our eternal enemies. Thus did I choose to abide in this ether-rich land, the better to fashion a trap for the Asian's essence. May I come in now? You may indeed, assuming you've finished. I 
I did as you asked. That's my girl, thank you. A little weird. I should probably explain. Though my body remained behind in the source, its limitations saw fit to accompany me. Which is to say, I cannot manipulate ether. I took up the gunblade for its defensive advantages, but on account of my little impairment, I cannot imbue the ammunition myself. Luckily for me, Minfilia has quite a talent for it. Minfilia, once we set forth, we are not like to return for some while. If thou wouldst choose tomes to take with thee, let it be now. Really? May I? Of course, my dear. Yet have care thou dost not add overmuch to thy burden, lest I incur Thancred's ire. Hast thou spoken to him of thine encounter with the Minfilia of Eld? Well, I suppose now is as good a time as any. As you know, I freed young Minfilia from captivity in Yulmor some three years past. Not long after, the two of us journeyed to the south of Armoreng, to the edge of the Empty where the flood was halted. It was there that she awakened, the Minfilia of old, my Minfilia. Tell me, tell me, what must I do to bring you back? My dearest Thancred, as I am now, I am no different from an Assian. This child is but a vessel, one of many I have used that I might spread word of her enduring blessing and preserve the flame of hope. In my name, each has died, never having lived her own life. I have taken enough from these children. I will take no more. But what of your suffering? Your sacrifice? This isn't fair! I will not stand for it. I cannot. There must be something we can do. Tell me! Should the day come when this child grows weary of fighting and wishes to cast it all aside, then shall I take up her burden. But should she wish instead to become the master of her own destiny, then shall I bequeath to her my all. Imbued with the strength that I reserve for rebirth, she may come to wield my powers as her own. And what of my wishes? What of Flamines? What of all the people who love and care for you and want nothing more than to see you again? It is not their decision to make. It is hers. This child's. This Minfilia's. You have ever watched over me, Thancred.
Now I ask that you do the same for her. Protect her. Teach her. Stand by her as you stood by me. There is much and more she does not know. She needs a guide to show her the ways of the world, or she will never find her own path. When the time comes, you will find me here. Until that day. Minfilia, wait! What? What happened? And then she was gone. Minfilia, the girl, claims to have no recollection of any of it. I have told her many things, where we came from, what we fight for, but of that day, I have not spoken. How do you want this to end? With the coming of another possessed of the blessing of light, the first hath begun to rise up in defiance of its fate. The question remaineth, however, who shall take up the flame of hope which Minfilia hath borne for so long? Whether we will it or no, the choice must soon be made. I'm sorry I took so long. It was so hard to choose. In the end, I settled on just the one. That is well. Now, if all is in order, let us set forth for Lida Loran. Let us pour. Because that's how the cool kids do it. We weren't expecting you all back so soon. We had scarcely begun playing with the twins. That said, your gifts are truly wonderful. Let me tell you, the milk and honey and biscuits won't last a day, and the wings are the loveliest we've ever seen. You've done us great kindness, and it's fey custom to return the gesture. If you desire anything of us, you need but name it. Wow, that's really, like, logical and polite of them. All right, we have a grilled rail. Sounds pretty good. Purple carrot juice. Yeah, caramels. Just caramels. Or broad bean soup. Yeah, caramels are just murder on your teeth, though, man. Just straight up biting into caramels like that. I'll take the grilled rail. Key to the castle. We are on, uh... We are on 73 quests now. Moving right along. So what is it that you desire? Rusty old coins like you mortals are wont to collect, perhaps? We are a result to vanquish the light warden of this land. To that end, we desire entry to Li Gia. 
What a strange thing to wish for. You might as well ask for your death. But if that is what you want, who are we to argue? Very well, I shall speak with the others. You've clearly been busy, Orange. Would you be so kind as to tell us what we've missed? So that was the purpose of the gifts. Is there anything you can tell us about this light warden? Aye, my lady. By circumstances most tragic, the light warden of this land is our king and ruler. Oh, is our king and ruler, Titania. It's not always so, of course. Our king fought the first light warden that threatened our home, you see. Fought it and won. But all the horrible light that came out went and corrupted them, turning them into a new light warden. Now they're only their king only a name, not remains of the wise and just ruler that used to be. We had no choice but to seal them in the castle. The magic for breaking the seal, we divided into four and wove each into a different relic to be kept apart until the time was right. And this dress is one of them. It's been in our safekeeping for years and years, but we decided to entrust it to you. Are you sure? Of course, custom demands it. Though you're most certainly going to your deaths, we thought we should at least let you try. That way we get to watch what happens. Of course, you can't break the seal unless you have the other relics, too. The shell crown is with the Fuath, the stone scepter is with the new Mu, and the crystal shoes are with the Amaro. Good luck finding them all. The facts thus disclosed, disclosed confirm mine own understanding. Our quest lieth now before us. First, let us he he high he to the lake there to claim the shell crown from the Fua. If we call to them before the untouchable gate, they will answer. Titania. Just look at how colorful this is. Look at how slow this is. Holy shit. Okay, finally. Hearken to me, O oh spirits of the water. We are come with an entreaty. Not in a talkative mood, apparently. I'm not exactly sure how the gate works. But if the Fuath are water spirits, perhaps we should take our search into the lake. Uh, oh, I, I suppose a brief dip wouldn't hurt. We all know Thancred swims like an eel, but what about you, Minfilia? I can swim well enough. Thancred taught me. Excellent. What about you, Arache? I'm not sure I've ever asked. Rather than swim, mayhap it would be more expeditious to walk upon the surface by means of magic. You too, Arrange? 
that you should be a kindred spirit. Worry not, my friend. I know some helpful tricks, and I should be more than happy to share them with you. Together we shall conquer the waves. Well, well, aren't we a lively lot? And you have an entreaty for us, you say. An entreaty for mortals. What a treat. Hi, my comrades and I are on a quest to vanquish the Light Warden. The Light Warden. To that end, we should humbly beg the loan of the Shell Crown, which we are given to understand is in the safekeeping of your people. Oh, is that all? Of course, of course, you may have it. You shall have it. Just like that. What do you want from us? Oh, no need to be so suspicious. The crown simply doesn't mean much to us is all. As a matter of fact, nothing means much to us. For we Fuath, it's over before it's begun, and we couldn't care less what becomes of the fairy king, nor the world for that matter. Having said that, we do so seldom have mortal visitors, and it would seem a shame not to make the most of you. Touch the untouchable gate and come hither to our domain, Don Meg. In your tongue, it means forbidden realm. Sounds forbidding, yes? And so it should, for we are one with the water, our home wrought of ripples and waves and currents. Find your way through, give us thrilling sport, and we will give you the crown. Don't make now accessible. Well, as you might have realized by the length of this video, I'm not going to do the dungeon. I believe it would make this probably like an hour and 45 minute long video, and that's just no good. So we'll save it for next time. We'll start right away with a dungeon. That's always exciting. And uh, they mentioned the new Moo that we'll get to talk to. Those are exciting. That's a uh, Droopy from Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Very exciting. Not really, but there you go. Why aren't new Moo a playable race? What the fuck? Why did they add bunny girls but not new Moo? That's bullshit. Anyways, my name is Mang. Game watching has been Final Fantasy 14. See you fine folks in the next part.